what's going on everybody and that is correct we have sabine in the top left don't worry though it is not your typical sabine list this instead is running yellow in place of a green in order to leverage all the very powerful events and tricks that we get access to in yellow a very very interesting sort of tempo aggro deck and it really has done amazing work at sort of outplaying your opponent this is one of those decks where if you know the meta well and you know kind of what your opponents are running or what they're more likely to run or you're able to kind of leverage the exhausting and, and, and the ability to kind of just tempo them out well you're really going to get paid off extremely well so if you all want to check out more deck techs from myself as well as other content spoilers i'm also going to be doing a set review of all the colors if you all want to check that out subscribe to the channel because there's going to be more videos coming daily but let's get started with the leader here and let's talk about sabine now you might notice um well we actually have a regular base and i guess that's what we're going to start off here jetta city is a very weak weak base um compared to all the other ones in my opinion because oftentimes there's not going to be a ton of different units to select for your jetta city there are some times when it comes into play but i've known or noticed rather that because we're playing so many different tricks a lot of low costed units and such i'd rather just play those out and then try to take initiative over jetta sitting because we are the aggro deck we're probably going to either have the board controlled because they are trying to trade into our creatures or we're just trying to kill them and race them so the extra five hp is a little bit better than the minus four minus zero oftentimes but as for Sabine herself, we all know Sabine's action dealing one damage to each base. This is something that you basically want to do every turn with this deck. Uh, unlike, you know, you know, some of the other Sabine lists where you might want to leverage the initiative a little bit more. This, because we have so many ways to sneak in damage, we have a lot more reach in this deck from what I've found. We are really really going to use this action all the time especially since we have five additional hp on our own base on top of that sabine herself four costed leader comes down super early and just starts smacking face uh this is the reason why sabine is so powerful is because you can get her down early and of course she has all the rebel synergies all the um you know heroism synergies and just is an extremely powerful unit uh to play so early on in the game she's pretty straightforward i would say you know she is the quintessential aggro leader as all she does is more damage more damage and more damage do you want to play her on turn three every single time with the four resources no sometimes you might want to wait an extra turn um, because you either are going to get her killed immediately or maybe you have an option to potentially you know play out sabine use one of the tricks that we have to get in an absurd amount of damage and maybe even trade up with a unit if you need to get rid of a unit um, which doesn't happen often but it sometimes happens so that's going to be Sabine. That's going to be the base. Let's talk about our ground units. So starting us off in the ground category, we have three copies of Greedo. Now, Sabine doesn't care as much about all the rebel synergies as Leia does. And so running, you know, green, uh, yellow for things like Greedo, for example, is one of the advantages of it because it's one of the strongest, if not the strongest one drops in the game. Uh, comes down turn one and it can even come off of, you know, something like a Leia, which we'll talk about in just a moment. The when defeated trigger has a 26% chance of landing, so pretty solid, um, and it can be relevant sometimes. But it's also just a three power to one drop, which is really, really strong as we want all of our turn one plays to have three power so that we can get in for that damage. And it's basically always going to trade if your opponent has initiative and wants to trade into Greedo. So that's quite nice as well. Three copies of Sabine Ren arguably the strongest two drop in the game hits for three power can remove shields before attacking for like crafty smuggler purposes which is really relevant definitely recommend you hit those so that you don't get surprise strike or whatever against the or sabine ren can also just be unattackable in some cases which is pretty cool we have three copies of leia now i want you to think of this card as sort of like a two turn 1.5 play and what i mean by that is most of the time if you have it in your turn one hand 
and you have something else to play, you would much rather play something else. Unless you have like Leia, ready a resource Greedo, then you might want to play Leia. But even then, if they have a two, three on the opposite side of the battlefield, because you're playing two things on turn one and probably actioning, you oftentimes are just going to get Leia eaten. And so this is more of a trick by exhausting units and potentially preventing people from trading into you and just getting in little points of damage here and there as sort of a later game play. We also have three copies of Lawful Insurgent, which, well, is a three powered one drop or a turn one play, which is really, really important. But it oftentimes has this random upside of potentially messing up your opponent's hand, which is pretty cool as well. If you've played any other card, any card doesn't have to be, you know, a rebel or whatnot. We also have three copies of Fighters for Freedom as our first three drop. This is interesting because we don't have a ton of red or aggression cards in the deck. But any additional little points of damage as we're getting here for playing a three powered three drop is worth it as Sabine already has so much reach. And we also have even more reach in our events, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Next up, we have three copies of Fleet Lieutenant. This has a ton of targets. As you can see, literally all of our units in the ground are rebels with the exception of Greedo. So if you go turn one Sabine, turn one Leia, turn one Lawful Insurgent, or heck, if you wait a little bit later and you go turn two Rogue Operative, turn two Fighters for Freedom, turn three Fleet Lieutenant, all of which are great plays, and it just gives you a huge hit in um, for additional damage. Next up, we have two copies of Rogue Operative. Um, this one is interesting because it is a four powered three drop um, if it's attacking but there are a lot of times when well you may not get an attack in and it's just defending at two power so there's only two copies of it uh, of it in the deck but it can still do a lot of work on the offensive and then we have our first four drop and actually only four drop in this deck three copies of k2so uh this is pretty standard and there's a sick combo in this deck and i say combo lightly but and like a mini synergy with K2. This is just four power and the ability to go ahead and give you that little bit of reach that you might need for that three damage. Lastly, and this is a little bit of an error here. Uh, apologies for this. This is two copies actually of Gorilla Attack Pod. Um, this is just, again, another way to kind of ready up something later on in the game immediately. It also has grit, which can be extremely relevant because if you ready this up and maybe you attack a unit to prevent yourself from dying suddenly it's attacking maybe as a nine one which can be pretty absurd that's gonna be the ground units let's talk about the space unit now, i'm sure you're all excited about the space units because this is one of the main reasons to be playing yellow let's start off though with the green squadron a wings we have three copies of those one of the better two drops in the deck um on turn one you know attacking for three in the air is really really strong Unfortunately, it is a one power on defense. So you do have to be careful with this. You know, if they're playing um, some sort of three, two or some sort of, you know, three, three star Viper uh, in interceptor just kills it. Um, things like that. You just got to be careful when you're playing your space units. And if you think they're going to outclass your space units, you may just want to go for a ground strategy. But we also have one of the best three drops in the game, if not the absolute best three drop in the Millennium Falcon, it is not a rebel, but it enters the play ready. And this just smacks every single turn. There are a lot of times because our curve is so low that we can actually just return this to our hand because we've dumped a lot of the things that we need to, and then just replay it to make sure it doesn't die. Do not underestimate the value of returning it to your hand especially if they're trying to defend their space with other space units you can just play this out kill their unit return it to your hand play it out attack their base return it to your hand you don't need to pay the one there are often times when you will pay the one but just don't tunnel on forcing yourself to pay the one every single turn next up we have three copies of red three keep in mind that this says each other friendly heroism unit um, so this counts for every single unit with the exception of Greedo in the deck. Uh, this is just a really powerful three drop as it attacks for three in the air, but also gives things like, for example, Millennium Falcon, the fourth power, or a green squadron agent attacking for four, Sabine attacking for four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, 
two copies of wing leader we have a lot of rebels in this deck millennium falcon greedo are not but the experience tokens go really well on something like the sabine leader which comes down very early or potentially sabine the unit or even you know some random unit like rogue operative with high toughness or a fighters for freedom or a green squadron a-wing it's just always quite good but we have one less copy because um, there are some cases when you go turn one Greedo and your only turn to play um, would have been wing leader. So I've kind of tuned one down just because trying to avoid that little awkward scenario, I guess you could say where you're playing just a turn two, two, one in the air. That's pretty weak. So two copies is the perfect amount for when you get those really, really absurd draws. And that's going to be the space units. Nothing too expensive, really keeping it low curve. This is going to be mainly your three drops um, that you're playing in the, you know, very early on into the game. Get the red three out early, get the Millennium Falcon out early so you can just start pumping in damage to the opponent. Let's talk about our events in the deck. The events are the main reason to be playing yellow in these more aggressive decks or tempo oriented decks because you can really get a lot of value. Now, there are a few events that, uh, well, you might be surprised are missing, but that's because we are really prioritizing extra power, ability to sneak in damage, and just getting in and trying to really save some actions with these events. First off, though, we have three copies of Metal Ceremony. Keep in mind that this is really good as just a zero costed give one experience counter to Sabine, the leader. If you can keep her alive and she can dump, you know, three damage as she deploys and then a four damage hit after which on turn four, that is really powerful. And oftentimes that six point of toughness can be the difference maker, right? If they're holding up, you know, takedown or whatever, and they've just been sitting there passing, pass, 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 pass. Let's say, okay, fine. I'm just not going to deploy Sabine and then I'm just going to take initiative. But then, you know, maybe they're going to do the same thing, try to do the same thing on turn uh, five or whatever. Or maybe they have two takedowns, so they've already taken down something. Well, guess what? That metal ceremony just puts you just out of range. That six point of toughness is really important. So don't just play this when you can do it for three rebels. Play it when you can do it for one, two even. Two is kind of the sweet spot, but there are a lot of times where just getting out on a Sabine is super nice. Three copies of shoot first. Um, this is really, really good against the aggro decks. Um, you can just delete their units, keep your unit alive for one resource, really, really powerful. But you can also just get in for one additional point of damage on your opponents, which can be quite good as well. Two, uh, three copies of Surprise Strike. Now, this is something that is really, really powerful. Attacking with a unit and it gets plus three, plus O. Oh, this is one of the best ways to just pump absurd amounts of damage into your opponent's base where, you know, let's say you go, I don't know, turn three, uh, fleet lieutenant, you've attacked with Sabine and suddenly you've hit their base for already five points of damage. And then let's say maybe they were to kill Sabine after that and you go turn four, surprise strike your base. You've already done 11 points of damage to their base. And that's not even including Sabine Ren, perhaps. Or if you've maybe readied up Sabine and you have a second surprise strike, you could be looking at something like 17 points of damage by the time you finished your Sabine turn, which is just absurd. <clears throat> surprise strike is one of the best, if not the best reason to run an aggro deck in yellow. And then we have... Some of the final kind of events in the deck, two copies of Sneak Attack and two copies of Change of Heart. Now, Sneak Attack might look a little bit odd in the deck, but this is really sweet with specific cards. Red 3 is a really, really nice option with it uh, because, you know, you can just play this out. Let's say you've gone ahead and... Um, you know, played a couple of units out, you know Red 3 is going to die and you just want to get in some damage with it. That can be quite nice. Uh, it's also really nice with Wing Leader. So you can get the experience tokens out uh, and it can cost one less mana. So maybe you can do, you know, a shoot first with it, etc. You know, you sneak attack out a Wing Leader, you shoot first with your Wing Leader, you're trading with something and suddenly you've gotten experience tokens. But the main synergy with this deck is K2SO. 
being able to sneak this guy in immediately attack for four and then have it die to deal three is really really strong now keep in mind that it makes k2's cost three but there are a lot of times where i'll just sneak in k2 on turn two and kill their unit with k2 and then also at the end of the turn deal three to their base and most likely deal an additional one to two points to their base from overwhelm extremely powerful unit with sneak attack and lastly the two copies of change of heart this is another way we gain a ton of reach with this deck for those pesky turns where you know they've probably deployed their early game sentinels to try to stop your onslaught but maybe they've deployed some sort of i don't know bright hope obi-wan um whatever you know sentinel they have or potentially just a really strong unit like they've deployed a boba fett um uh, and you're like okay well you've already attacked me with maybe some sort of unit i don't know whatever it is and then you get to go in and kill their unit with their own boba fett or you just smack their base which is oftentimes what you happen have to do because this is your really big way to kind of finish off the game when those games go a little bit longer change of heart is an excellent excellent uh way to kind of just nug your opponents at that final final amount of damage that you need especially since you could be you know taking luke skywalkers you could be taking uh darth vaders you could be taking whatever it is reinforcement walkers you know whatever it is k2so right you get the when defeated trigger if you kill their k2so it's just really really powerful uh, a spell especially in the later parts of the game so that's going to wrap up the main deck of Sabine here. There's a ton of different variations you can run with the events, by the way. Um, you, depending on your meta, you can run less shoot first, run some waylays in the main deck um, or some more tempo oriented plays. From my meta and from what I've seen most popularly, shoot first, three copies in the main deck. I like that. Uh, I've seen a lot of lists do one or two. Um, if you're trying to build a yellow Sabine list, I've seen some variations out there. But for me, the three copies of Shoot First really work well against the aggro decks because um, you get to keep your unit and kill off their unit for such a cheap cost. So just keep that in mind if you are looking to change some things up. Shoot First is one thing that you can change up. Also, less metal ceremonies, less um, sneak attacks. You don't even have to run sneak attack, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I do think the ground and space units are... Um, for the most part pretty you know pretty much things that you want uh maybe varying copies as well with those let's move on to the sideboard so starting us off in the sideboard i was really trying to get certain cards that are going to work really well against your boba matchup and your aggro matchup and things like that but we do have a few cards to shore us up against control as we already are kind of main decking a lot of the answers to some boba units as well as some aggro units such as shoot first for example but in the sideboard here we have two copies of ezra bridger as this is one of the best cards against the more controlling decks as you can potentially just draw slash filter out the top of your deck the only thing about this unit is it is a three four which is one less power or a weaker effect than you might want otherwise so it is meant for more grindy matchups or the ability to just kind of loot slash filter the top of your deck one copy of ozatuck liberator gunship this is really good against the aggro decks as well as some of the boba units you can really just annihilate one of their three power units as well as keep your gunship alive kills off red threes kills off a wings kills off x wings um even the cartel spacers for example it just kills them and you get to keep your gunship three copies of chewbacca this is another really good one against things like boba fett uh, as well as the aggro decks because oftentimes the sixth toughness is just enough to get chewbacca out of range of certain things such as you know opponents boba fett's um their their uh leader boba fett unit and then they can attack back and kill off something or just attack them for damage so it gives you a little bit of a wall of course they could do some, some things like surprise strike and such but if they're surprise striking your chewbacca you oftentimes will much rather have that than surprise strike your base um, which can be really brutal 
two copies of asteroid sanctuary this is particularly good against the boba turn and what i mean by boba turn is uh, you know they ready to resource <clears throat> off boba maybe, maybe they played like a shoot first or something they deploy their boba they play some sort of thing like ecl steadfast battalion for example and then they're trying to attack with boba and then get another play out exhausting down boba giving a shield token can potentially save things like let's say you had <clears throat> i don't know an ezra bridger or one of our many three drops like a fighters for freedom or a rogue operative you get to go ahead and place a shield token on that unit so that steadfast battalion can't just annihilate it for free essentially and then also you get to avoid the massive game swinging turn that is boba <laughs> so i really like asteroid sanctuary in that particular situation and then lastly two copies of spark of rebellion this is another really good one uh, from my opinion against boba as well as really good against the more controlling matchups the reason i like it against boba is you can kind of disrupt their more tempo slash um aggressive plays in the early game because there are a lot of times when boba has a lot of events and they're relying on one to two to three different threats in the early game you know maybe they got a boss maybe they have a boba maybe they have a two drop or whatever and if you can rip one of their threats out of their hand they might be left with too many waylays too many asteroid sanctuaries or whatever they have and this ends up being a a big annoyance for them because they don't want to be playing waylays on an empty board they want to be waylaying your units and then attacking with theirs so they can get in damage and prep for that big boba turn as i mentioned so spark of rebellion actually comes in pretty nicely against those decks especially since our curve is so low so we can deploy a leia to the board on turn two and then follow it up with a spark of rebellion or turn three you can go spark of rebellion lawful insurgent uh, and then suddenly you know you're really annoying their hand or you could even go you know spark of rebellion sneak attack a fleet lieutenant in kill their unit or surprise strike or shoot first or whatever there's so many different options with this deck because it's such a low curve deck that i've really actually enjoyed spark of rebellion quite a bit again we're trying to kind of outplay your opponents um that is the idea of the cunning strategy right so that is something that we are doing with this deck and it's been really really fun again i messed around with the numbers a lot if your meta is a little bit different if you have less aggro uh if you are trying to kind of be just an all-around generally powerful um deck then you can run a very similar list, but maybe just drop a few shoot first, maybe drop a, a metal ceremony or two, maybe add things like, you know, maybe you want to add some waylays, some asteroid sanctuaries to the main deck, etc. There's so many different ways you could go about things. It really depends on, of course, your meta, the decks you're seeing all the time. But this is some stuff that I found to be particularly good against the decks that I have been frequently going against, which is Boba uh, and the more aggro decks pretty commonly. So thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and I will see you all on the next one.